Hey everyone, welcome to the Andev channel. Today we're diving into a step-by-step -step guide to deploying PSN's Community Edition in Microsoft Azure as a second-generation virtual machine. If you're looking for a way to set up a cost-effective firewall in the cloud, whether for a home lab, a business network, or a security test environment, this video will walk you through the entire process. We'll cover everything from creating a PFSense image locally to getting it up and running in Azure with all the necessary configurations along the way. Don't worry, all the scripts we've used in the creation of this video are available from the GitHub link below. Let's take a quick look at what we'll be covering. We'll start by setting up PFSense on Hyper-V to generate an image that's compatible with Azure. Then before we upload, we'll make some essential modifications to ensure it works correctly in a cloud environment. Once the image is ready, we'll transfer it to an Azure storage account so we can use it to deploy our VM. Now we have the image uploaded to Azure, we'll set up the virtual machine, configure networking, and ensure it has the correct settings to function as a firewall. Finally, we'll log into PFSense via the web interface and do a quick verification to make sure everything is working as expected. By the end of this video, you'll have a fully deployed PFSense firewall running in Azure, ready to handle network traffic, just like an on-premise setup. So, whether you're a cloud enthusiast, a network engineer, or just curious about deploying open source firewalls in the cloud, stick around. Let's get started then. First, we're going to need to produce a VHD image to upload to Azure Blob Storage. Let's start by creating a new virtual machine in Hyper-V. Let's call it PFSense. Right, now, the first important option we need is to make this a generation two virtual machine. Let's leave the memory at the default four gig using Dynamic is fine. For the virtual machine generation, we'll only need a single network interface that we'll go ahead and point to our primary interface. Wi-Fi here, but yours could be wired. At this stage, we won't configure a virtual hard disk. We'll come back to that later. Now let's go ahead and create the initial virtual machine. Okay, now we have our virtual machine. Let's configure it a bit more. Let's start by creating the virtual hard disk. This will be under SCSI controller. We'll need to create a new virtual disk, which must be fixed size and we can go and call it pfsense.vhdx. We can't create this as a VHD at this point, as generation two virtual machines only work with VHDXs. We can give our virtual disk 10 gig of space, more than enough for our simple pfsense instance. Let's go ahead and create that virtual disk. Next for us is to upload the final image in a bootable state. We'll need to disable checkpoints. We'll also need to go ahead and disable secure boot. Last but not least, we'll need to go and add a DVD drive that we can point to our already downloaded PSN's community ISO image. That's it, we're now ready to boot the PFSense virtual machine. Once we boot the virtual machine, it will attempt to pixie boot. We let this time out and it should pick up the installed media mounted to the DVD drive we added. When this boots, just let the initial boot options time out and we'll be in the install. We'll need to accept the notices, then proceed to install PFSense. Let's configure the network interface to use DHCP. We don't need to worry about VLANs in our simple configuration. Next, we need to configure the virtual hard disk. Let's let PFSense make the decisions here. The final option before it proceeds to install is version. So let's go ahead and install the current stable release. The installer now will proceed to install everything that is needed to run PFSense. At the end of the install, proceed to reboot and we'll need to run through interface assignment. The first time we restart the virtual machine, it will ask the following questions. Firstly, should VLANs be set up now? We'll answer no. Enter the WAN interface name, or A for auto detection. We need to enter HN0. Finally, enter the LAN interface name, or A for auto detection. We'll just hit carriage return. And just to confirm, do you want to proceed? Obviously, we'll say yes. Excellent. We're now ready for stage two, customizing the image for Azure. To complete this part of the process, we're going to need to jump into the terminal. So let's pick option A. Now, to accelerate the remaining parts of this video, I've created bash scripts to automate what would be a number of manual edits and CLI commands. They're all available in the GitHub repo in the description. Let's start by looking at the prepare scripts, of which there are three. Go ahead and open 00oschanges.sh. 
This script makes necessary changes to the DevD Hyper-V configuration. Commenting out sections related to VF up and VF attach, which causes conflicts within PFSense at boot in Azure. We can go ahead and download this script onto the virtual machine, set it to executable, and then run it. The second script in the prepare folder, 01 pfsense config.sh, applies some tweaks to the pfsense config XML. The first two configuration changes are to make the serial console work in Azure, and the last is to disable the HTTP preferred check on the web UI so that we can log in after deployment. Let's go ahead, download this script, mark it as executable, and run on our virtual machine. The third and final script in the prepare folder, 02 whileagent.sh, prepares the pfSense image for the Microsoft Azure agent by installing Git, Python, and setup tools. It clones the Microsoft WA Linux agent repository, installs the service, sets the whileagent enable flag in rcconfig.local, adds a custom script to the forward slash user forward slash local forward slash etc forward slash rc.d folder so that the pfsense daemon starts the wa agent at boot and disables a couple of settings too the provisioning agent and the firewall from the wa agent config let's go ahead download this script mark it as executable and run on our virtual machine congratulations you now have a configured PFSense virtual machine with all the necessary additions ready for Azure. All we must do now is shut down the virtual machine and we're ready for stage three. Before we can upload the image to Azure, we need to convert it from a VHDX to the older format VHD. This can all be achieved through Hyper-V by going to the edit disk in the actions pane. We must locate the VHDX Choose the disk format of VHD, keep it as a fixed size, and save it as a VHD. We kept ours as 10 gig, so the conversion time will be very quick. However, this may take some time if you make the virtual machine with a much larger disk. Now we have our VHD ready. Let's get this into Azure over in stage four. Okay, so in stage four, we're going to look at the script under upload within the GitHub repository. 00, zero create sa and upload.sh. In this script, we're going to create a .m file for keeping state between the script and our virtual machine launch script. In this state, we'll be keeping a random number for the unique name necessary for the storage account. At the top of this script, we have several variables firstly focused on the storage account that we need this unique number for and the container that we'll create within it. We'll also hold a variable where we've stored the VHD on this file mode. When we kick this script off, we'll firstly create the resource group we're going to use for everything. Then we'll go ahead and create the storage account with standard LRS. This is only going to hold our VHD, so LRS will suffice. We're going to use our logged on user, the ACCLI, to interact with the storage account. So we'll need to grant this user storage blob data contributor access to the scope of the storage account. Applying this permission may not be immediate, so we'll keep polling the permission until it appears. When this permission is set, we'll go ahead and create the container in the storage account using auth mode login. As soon as this has been created, we'll be good to upload the VHD. Again, using the variables defined up top for the VHD and storage account details. The most important option here though is the max connections, which we set to 1000. This will force AZCLI to multi-thread the upload, thus achieving the best upload potential. Right, let's set this script to run and complete the upload. Wonderful, now the script has finished uploading, we're ready for stage five. As you can see, our storage account is looking lonely, so let's get our virtual machine set up to run the PFSense firewall. For this, we'll need our final script, 00 create azure vm.sh, which you can find in a deploy folder in the GitHub repository. In this script, you'll find the same .m file and the variables defined at the start necessary for script execution. Firstly, our vnet needs defining, along with the vnet prefix and subnets to be used. We're going to want an external and internal interface for our pfsense firewall. Then we want the firewall name and vm skew. 
We'd also need the VHD URL within the storage account and a network security group for the external interface so we can reach it via a public IP. So, the first actual AZ CLI command is to create the resource group that already exists. Then we'll go ahead and create the VNet. Please note, these scripts are written idempotently so you can safely run them multiple times. We'll then create the subnets based on the definition above. We'll then retrieve some IDs necessary later in the script. Let's create a public IP for the external interface. We'll now create the network interfaces for the virtual machine, taking note of the public IP assignment on the external interface. Next, we'll create the image from the uploaded VHD, again taking note of the OS type being Linux and the Hyper-V generation V2. Let's then retrieve the ID of this freshly created image. OK, so we're now ready to create the virtual machine. Here we need to pass in the Generate SSH Keys option, along with the image ID and the storage SKU to be used for the managed disk. In most cases, this will be either standard SSD LRS or standard HDD LRS. We also need to tell it which interfaces to use and in what order, so we want external first, followed by internal. We'll set encryption at host and the OS disk name. After we've created the virtual machine, we want to enable boot diagnostics so that we can access the firewall by console through the Azure portal if needed. Finally, we'll go ahead and create a network security group, which will create a single rule in allowing HTTPS traffic inbound from the internet, and then assign this network security group to the external interface of our virtual machine. Excellent. Now we've run this through, let's proceed to deploy our PFSense firewall. Brilliant, that script's run without fault. We should now have a PFSense firewall deployed in Azure. Let's go ahead and jump back into the Azure portal and refresh our resource group. As we can see now, we have our shiny new resources. Let's quickly jump to the public IP and see if we can get to the login page. Okay, so our IP is 85.210.124.225. We can drop this into a fresh tab and browse to the HTTPS endpoint. Okay, firstly, the certificate will obviously be invalid. We expect that, so that's not a problem. So let's hit continue. Exciting, we have our login page. This is very promising. The default password for all PFSense installs is admin and PFSense. So let's tap that in. Excellent, we've logged in. Let's follow the setup wizard. Obviously, supporting NetGate, the maintainers of PFSense, would be a good thing if you can. OK, we can now see the general information for our instance. We'll just set our DNS servers to Google DNS for now. Let's set our time zone to UTC, and we'll use the default NTP server provided. For our interfaces, we'll keep them as DHCP, as this is best left managed by Azure, so we'll click through next. We'll create a secure password. And then we need to reload the firewall for our changes to take effect. This will take a couple of seconds. Then we finish the wizard. OK, let's click finish and we should be presented with the default PFSense overview. Perfect, we are. Everything is reporting as it should be. And that's it. You've successfully deployed PFSense Community Edition in Microsoft Azure. Now, you have a powerful open source firewall running in the cloud, ready to protect and manage your network traffic. If you found this guide helpful, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the Andev channel for more cloud, networking, security and development content. Also, drop a comment below if you have any questions or if there's a specific topic you'd like me to cover next time. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.